Dear colleagues, uh, happy to see you at our optical seminar. And uh, uh, please, due to secu security reason, we kindly ask you to uh, to use your full name for joining seminar. So, as I wrote in uh, in the chat, uh, also in order to arrange the seminar smoothly, we uh, we propose the following rules: uh, your microphones and videos will be kept. Uh, turned off by default, but you are able to switch on your microphone if you if you want to ask any question. And there are two preferred ways to ask questions. So first one, uh, please raise your hand, and we will interrupt the speaker at the most appropriate moment. Uh, and in principle, you may also type a question to the chat. Um, so and then also we can at some convenient moment also. Uh, ask the speaker. Uh, ask the speaker, and today's speaker uh, will be uh, Dr. Sergei Deneko uh, from Calgary, uh, University of Calgary, from Canada. And the talk will be about indoor uh, organic photovoltaic devices. Uh, so please, Sergey, we have one hour approximately. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to present uh, indoor organic photovoltaic devices. First, I would like to talk about our strategy, how we design and improve performance, and how we achieve the goal in our labs. Second. Okay, our strategy and following the next step, it's first, it will be identification applications, and test materials, OPV optimizations, and the finally and practical OPV models. And let's get started with indications applications. And organic photovoltaics and uh, in the, our labs, we indications for the indoor uh, applications, but indoor it's very dif different from the outdoor because Outdoors, sun is very broadly have is very broad, broadly peaks. Also, energy is is highest, and instead of in the indoor, indoor, and the applications is spectrum line between 400 to uh, 800 nanometers. Also, in the power is around one watts per centimeter square. And this is means we need in the. Uh, Indifications, uh, which materials we can use it for the uh, spectrum between 400 to 700 nanometers. You can see on the right and the spectrum, and the, which I recorded, and the, from the indoor light. Uh, also, you can see how and set up to measurements and the indoor photovoltaics. Mm. Indoor photovoltaics is very important because in the and the last decade is in the you can see and the very high dramatically in the publications about in internet internet things. This is me, needs smart, uh, devices for the smart technology, but indoor photovoltaics which uh, can give power and, um, and increase and in the uh, time of working these devices. It's around in the few hundred publications. This, but more research uh, researcher and focuses on the uh, on the more researcher on the focuses on the uh, studied and the indoor photovoltaic because and the uh, you can see in the market is will be dramatically is increase and the. Um, Indoor photovoltaics. And this is means very important to design and development devices for the indoor applications. And next uh, strategy, we indications applications. Now we tested materials for the uh, indoor applications. This is material for the industrial. We need not collagen solvent processing. Why? Because it's uh, uh, more, more country in the 
uh, have specialty issue to use it in the non-galagen solvent in the manufacturing processing. And if two indification materials and um, design materials, and uh, we focus on the non-fullerene act acceptor materials because this is materials is um, we can control and light absorptions we can control energy levels and also uh, you can see in the last decades and uh, for example pdm materials is dramatically is increased performance from the four to eight percent and also and uh, and organic photovoltaic achieved the goal for the uh, performance around 15 to 70 percent in the last last two years but problem with high performance materials uh, which not non-pdi it's very costly and uh, if you synthesize in the lab we uh, we can synthesize there not non fullerene and PDI materials around a uh, few grams and will be costing around a few hundred dollars. And also our materials are already available on the, in the market. And, but in the fullerene, you can see it's around $1,000 per few milligrams also. It's, and this means in the final devices for the markets will be very expensive. And Next strategy, it will be indications materials for the indoor applications. And on the left, you can see um, spectrum one examples in the PDI with uh, uh, polymers. The spectrum is lying in the below to 700 nanometers. And uh, also, you can see the difference and the spectrum indoor lighting from the cold to warm and um, very good matching with absorption spectrum. And uh, also our twisted PDI is strong absorption, have strong absorption, um, uh, scalable, we can synthesize it around 20 grams on the one, one synthesis and uh, very high stable in the lighting in the temperature state have highest temperature stable also and very high solubility and the different solvents for the next and uh, i can show you in the example in the our, our devices in the standard uh, polymers pit the standard polymers pita b7 and um, mix it uh, these two materials give high, good and bulk reactions and showed high voltage and um, good and uh, current but poor fill factor also in the replacement on the green solvent we, which can use it in the manufacturing and the, there are showed same result this is means and uh, this materials is good dissolved and good for the indoor uh, for the uh, manufacturing applications, but it's still performance around 5%. And the next step, we, we will be optimization structure. We use a different strategy to optimization structure. First, it will be a change alkyl change, but change alkyl change leads to in the change in solubility materials and the also improve the mix bit between polymers and uh, acceptors and also we indications that longest and bulky alkyl change leads to highest performance and give us around six percent performance but still higher voltage and increase a uh, little bit increase current but still pure poor fill factor for the Change it fill factor. We use it different. We use it additive for we choose it and the DPA because this is green solvent uh, additive and we have got in the six per six percent performance. It's slightly increased, but to increase uh, concentrations and the additive leads to high crystallizations and the PDI. Uh, 
and uh, decrease performance. And the next strategy, it will be uh, changed uh, polymers all, ch all um, change it and the alkyl change on the diff difference material, on the difference alkyl change for the PDI. And next, it will uh, our it's, um, in the labs focus on the practical OPV models. For the practical OPV models, we need and uh, first optimization structure, and next and the optimizations and the slot decoding. Why it's slot decoding? Because slot decoding we can productions and uh, easily to few meters and uh, uh, solar cells. We switch materials from the um, new, poly new polymers, which synthesize from the brilliant materials and we collaborations with this, this company and design it in new polymers for us. Uh, this PDI, uh, this is new polymers. And it's good soluble and the green solvent again and uh, very high scalable and one synthesis give you a few few grams and we use these materials to the test it with our top pdi materials and we have got uh, 6.5 percent by spin potent and 4.5 percent uh, by and slot dye also you can see on the right and the average data it's very interesting important because in the slot die and the spin cast it's very different and um, to making devices because in this when you slot die the solvent is evaporations very slowly and uh, also organization structure it will be different what why performance is uh, decreased and to the test these systems for the indoor because our goals in the, will get in high performance indoor of indoor photovoltaic devices. And this is in materials very good to match in this and the indoor uh, lighting. And we comparisons with uh, silica solar cells, which and uh, silica solar cells will choose it which uh, available in the market and we Tested in silica solar cells and the, and the one sun that I give you give fifteen percent and six point five our devices. But uh, when we switch and um, uh, outdoor lighting to indoor, and uh, you can see that in when the lighting is decreased, the silica solar cells performance dramatically decreases. Also, that I give you very low voltage, but um, our our devices and they showed its high performance. It's nine point five percent, and the indoor lighting. This is means this material is good for the indoor applications in the heaviest and the power from the indoor lighting, and also. This is I describe how our strategy work, how we we achieve our goals and um, our labs. Next, I'm describe how accuracy to measurements and the indoor photovoltaics because it's now it's very important because in the few papers use a different uh, um, device difference. Uh, devices and uh, also indoor is not standardized it's also in the it's very high uh, ter tight, tight to it's very difficult to indications uh, in comparison between different performance devices and the uh, and the indoor lighting also indoor lighting have di uh, in the uh, have different spectrum, different lamp have different spectrum, and and this is effect on the performance. So, uh, in the, my opinion, I'm uh, uh, 
presented in two ways to accuracy measurements in the indoor photovoltaic. It, first, this is used for the diode with spectrometer. And we measure and um, power use photodiode and spectrometer. After that, we replacement and uh, photodiode on the, on the devices and uh, exactly on the same positions and measurements and uh, performance for the devices. Second way, this is used in the integrated sphere with uh, spectrometer. And um, this is devices must be calibrated. And we again measure and send the, we use it in the spectrometer to measure its power. And we put devices on the top hole on the spectrometer and measure its performance devices. And this is two way and the accuracy, accuracy to measure its indoor photovoltaic. How we can, can control it. And also, it's very important to understand that it, uh, we need uh, measurements in the sense this is lax which operated in the more papers. But main point to use intensity, because intens intensity, uh, we can calculations and the performance from the, uh, from the indoor photovoltaic devices. Here I described how we can use it and the photodiode come together with spectrometer. First, we need uh, and the, like, calibrations and the spectrometer and they use it K for calculations coefficients, which calculations from the S, this is in the measurements functions from the of wavelength and by use it in spectrometer also. And we have R, this is R, this is its functions of wavelength of calibration silica photodiode, which you must get from the company company who is the sells you photo, de photo detector. This is as well and the response and per per watts. Next, uh, you measure and send the spectrum and calculations and intensity power from the indoor lighting. Like use, use these equations. We have spectrum of the, for, for example, this is spectrum of the, our lighting. And next, you, you can integrate it in calculations power. You have got four, and I got in the five points, uh, seven watt per meter square. Next, we can uh, use it in next equations to calculations how much lux we have got from the, this lighting. But more papers use it in operations in the lux. I recommend to use it in the operations with watt first. And this is in the new devices, which uh, we uh, made it. And uh, this is future in publications. And blue, uh, I, I'm demonstration, dem would like to demonstrate how we can calculations and uh, how we can accuracy measurements these devices performance. First, we measure and the GV curve and the indoor lighting. Next, we measure and the EQS spectrum on the each devices. After that, we use the EQS spectrum and the spectrum on the uh, uh, indoor lighting and the, and the calculations how much uh, current we can get in from these devices. And this is here in the bracket, we can see calculations, current, and measurements current. Also, we can calculations and predictions voltage. If you will use it in the, if you will measure it in the voltage on the uh, sun spectrum, and, and we have current from the sun spectrum, we have current from the indoor spectrum, and we can estimate it how will be changed in the voltage, and after that, we can calculations in the voltage. And using these two parameters, we can calculations performance. And also, you can see it's very close performance with measurements performance. And this is means which we measure performance, it's we accuracy to measurements these devices. And it's, it's very important uh, way to do it because and the more papers not did it. And if you 
you will did it and uh, you can see difference between performance measurements and performance you will get in by calculations. This is means there are not accuracy to measurements in your hot quality tanks. And thank you for uh, attention and my presentations. And uh, this is uh, the group which working in the, our labs. And uh, this is my professor's supervisor and Gregory Welch. And also, if you want to collaborations and um, making devices for the indoor photovoltaics and you're welcome to send me emails on or Dr. Dr. Welch. Thank you for speaking. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot for your talk. So now uh, yeah, I, we are it's not short. It's okay. <laughs> it's 20 <laughs> minutes. I think so. It's very fast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's much faster than the previous uh, talk. <laughs> okay, uh, so please, any questions <clears throat> from our audience? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I will start from very general question. Maybe uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. for, for people who are not familiar with uh, the effect of de degrees of efficiency for at lower at lower uh, luminosity. So, what is the physical mechanism for for these de degrees of VOC? For silicon solar cells, for instance, and why in uh, uh, OPV and why in OPV it's, it preserves its value? Uh, and the decrease, decrease efficiency, this is me, uh, uh, silica solar cells, because in the spectrum, as a silica solar cells is very broadly and then uh, line below to the uh, uh, up to the 800 nanometers. 700 nanometers, and uh, what were also in the spectrum of the indoor application, indoor source, it's uh, between 400 and 700 nanometers, and silica solar cells not enough to generation current, so the getting high voltage and getting and the power. Uh, but why uh, do we lose uh, VOC, uh, open circuit voltage, for silica? Uh, yeah, it's uh, you can see equations. It's here. Mm -hmm. If if you will lose current, and uh, there are dramatically decrease in the and the voltage. This is means if you current current decrease, if you current dramatically decrease for the uh, silica solar cells, and it will be voltage decrease too. Also, in the power, not enough to. Um, uh, Generations. Uh, uh, not enough power to the for the potential potential and the solar for the separations and the charge in the so, silica solar cells. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks. Because in the power in between. Uh, for example, in the if you use it in the silica solar cells and the and in the outdoor power, it's around in the 100 milliwatts per centimeter square. But power in the indoor it below to the one watts per centimeter square, milliwatts per centimeter square. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, do I understand correctly that standard uh, bulb? Uh, I mean, lamp which just uh, uh, mm -hmm. with very broad spectrum, this mm -hmm. which we used yeah. uh, maybe in twentieth century. So it doesn't work. I mean, it, it the spectral mention is much worse uh, as well. So the efficiency of indoors solar cells uh, still so for for such kind of sources is lower as compared with these LED sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as you can see here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can see this is spectrum and uh, this is spectrum and uh, uh, solar cells. You can see it's very broadly. Also, and the uh, few lamps and which we use it before here and dry half and uh, broadly peak and from the 100, 1000 nanometers to 400. But for the indoor applications and uh, 
uh, spectrum dramatically changed between last decades and more people now use it and uh, and company use it and the LED spectrum and because it's more natural for the uh, also dry and uh, use it low power and uh, for and spectrum line between 400 to 700 nanometers. Also, it's vi visible region for the eye. It's good for the working. Also, uh, also I see trend trend that uh, change it from the. Uh, this is a spectrum and the cold white cold, but and now is a trend to the use it and the warm lamp. This I can show the spectrum and the. Uh, this is one, yeah, and cold to the to the warm, and uh, also and the last decades and the publication small papers for the indoor applications that I use it and the uh, LED spec uh, LED for the cold cold white, but now it will be warm. It's uh, it's very hard to comparison between two device two, between devices which publications and which you use it now and the new development. I, I think for the comparisons better if you you cal calculations performance like I showed uh, procedure use it this day data for the calculations for the comparisons you devices it's better way for the comparison between different devices performance. All right, thanks. So yeah. we have one question from the chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, the current of OPV is small uh, for outdoor and indoor. Uh, so maybe I do not get so that. So Alexandra, can you maybe ask yourself? Maybe there is a miss of, <laughs> there is not enough punctuation. <laughs> I mean, so uh, for indoor, it's much smaller than for outdoor. What is the reason for that? So yeah as for me it's obviously that less sun the less current but uh, maybe uh, something maybe something else ah yeah it's okay it's um and okay. maybe i uh, can say like that one and uh, uh, very important to get an and the high voltage devices for the uh, for the of course for the out, outdoor lighting because if you you have got highest voltage devices and this is means for the indoor it will be uh, if you use, use devices and the will good matching with spectrum it will be uh, saved in voltage and saved high high current but if you your spectrum as uh, absorption devices um, is not good matching with and uh, indoor lighting. You will be lose not only current, you lose also in voltage. This is uh, because uh, power not not enough power to generations and the charge in the inside of the devices. When you this mean this is physical of the devices for. Uh, for the photovoltaic devices. This means when you have uh, charge inside of devices, there have highest potential. If you have more uh, ch charge inside the devices, you have highest potentials. This is you means highest voltage. In also, this is dep depends on the energy band gap of the uh, materials which you use it. This is not only depends on the power, also depends on the materials which you used for the uh, making devices. For example, if you see here, silicon solar cells have around 0.6 voltage. Mm -hmm. And this is in the, depends on the silica band gap. Also, when you power is a decrease, this is uh, dramatically decrease in the, voltage because not enough to generation charge inside of the silica also in, you can see is low lighting is around 300 lux we have around 0.2 voltage and uh, also i am tested silica devices and the lowest than 300 lux and the 
silica solar cells and not generated in the power. But in the, our devices, uh, also in the 50 lux is still generations because there are still good matching with uh, absorptions and all energy which there are generations and also coming from the uh, spectrum between 400 to 700. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> I understand questions. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. maybe maybe later we can dis discussions on the Russians if you <laughs> want. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, please uh, ask any questions because we have a lot of time and we have a lot of people who work with OPV. Okay. So. <laughs> hi, 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 Sergey. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I've got a question. Thank you for a nice talk. And uh, as I understood, you use uh, for uh, for uh, your devices uh, uh, small molecule donor materials and uh, yes. and uh, polymeric acceptor materials. Yes. So you create uh, heterojunction structures, not planar. No, no. Yes, we make an the uh, we use it. I'm using them polymers mm -hmm. like donor and. Uh, Except for like fully ran materials, yeah. Not not fully ran materials, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, this uh, molecule in the left, uh, uh, in the left uh, uh, acceptor. This is acceptor. The left corner. This is acceptor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. On the left corner, it's acceptor. On the middle, it's a donor. Aha. Uh -huh. So uh, you use uh, this acceptor molecule instead of fully ran. Exactly, because fully okay. ran, and uh -huh. because because fully ran, and when I I tested fully ran, and mm -hmm. fully ran and uh, not stable to the temperature. If you heating it's around eighty degree during cup uh, during two days, the performance dramatically decrease. Oh, okay. Our, okay. Yeah, our okay. materials. Yes. Okay, yes, I understand. Uh, then my question is about: uh, Do you see any difference? Uh, in uh, efficiency of your devices, uh, depending on dispersion of this acceptor material in donor polymer, uh, so uh, it it can crystallize and uh, and uh, agglomerate in a big uh, molecules uh, uh, that demonstrate different absorption from just single molecule. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, this is the. Uh, uh, this is device uh, materials I'm using with uh, ortoxylen solvent and the DPA additive. Mm -hmm. DPA additive helps crystallizations and uh, making small dimensions these materials. Also, the spectrum dramatically is changed. Also, uh, this is spectrum already, which I'm showed on the right corner. This is mm -hmm. already opti optimizations and the structure optimization spectrum of this uh, donor and acceptor also there are three, three and seven ratio. This mm -hmm. means seven and the uh, uh, acceptor and three and the donor. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And uh, yeah. the next question I have. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I know uh, the uh, all, all this. Uh, uh, principles or mechanism of function and this uh, photovoltaics mm -hmm. is uh, dividing of exciton on a charge mm -hmm. transfer states. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, do you observe some transfer states, charge transfer states in, in this uh, blends? Uh, we, we didn't, uh, we, we just, uh, when we're making devices, we measure just and the uh, Conductivity hole or or um, we measure mobility hole or electron mobility. We make it for offsets and uh -huh. measure just mobility. We don't measure. We didn't. We didn't have uh, uh, equipment to measure charge mobility for the devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. Uh -huh. I mean, and the, uh, on the light, on the light, we uh -huh. don't measure. Uh -huh. So, so yeah. spectroscopy. 
spectroscopy yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, we don't have spectroscopy here. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think so if you uh, uh, contact with me or Greg, it will be good for the collaborations to the uh, measure and spectroscopy and uh, charge mobility. It will be interesting, I think so. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so um, because, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, the question, uh, the, the next question is, uh, mm -hmm. and, and maybe a proposal, uh, mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, when uh, efficiency can change with uh, intensity of elimination, so you mm -hmm. saturate uh, your charge transfer states and uh, uh, split in of exciton, divide in of exciton, uh, it, uh, it's not so efficient, maybe mm -hmm. at some uh, uh, elimination intensity. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't catch your questions. <laughs> uh, uh, I I meant uh, that uh, efficiency of mm -hmm. your device uh, can depend strongly on intensity because of uh, saturation of charge transfer states. Yeah, it's uh, but very in in interesting because uh, when I'm measuring, what is this? The second. When I measure my devices on the, uh, for example, in the indoor applications, indoor lighting, uh, the performance still highest and still same. There are not changed dramatically performance. This mm -hmm. means in the uh, charge from the, uh, um, amount of exciton and uh, between uh, low, highest lighting in the indoor and highest lighting in the uh, lowest lighting in the indoor the generation same because and you can see in the and the if you if you see on the for example on the silicon we we saw in difference performance between uh, 300 lux and uh, 3000 lux in 7 and 3.2 this is mm -hmm. means in the charge generations on the Silica is the uh, most sensitive than the f than our devices because performance did not did not change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. but uh, yeah, but but for the of course we need to study it how the how many for example and the charge generations and the uh, and the indoor lighting but in the most most important way for us just making devices and getting performance <laughs> we don't study it in the uh, fully in physics and uh, how it's working but we uh, our goal is to make a final product for the company which we collaborations Mm -hmm. oh, okay, but uh, uh, what yeah. was uh, the source of your light? Uh, was it uh, continuous wave light or, or was it uh, some light with duty cycle, uh, like from uh, uh, lighting we use in usual light on our homes? Ah, this is continuous, this is standard and uh, uh, LED lighting kind of which I use it for. This is uh -huh. bubble, bubble for the standard lamp. Which you okay, can buy uh, but, but so uh, I did you compare with uh, a usual lighting device? Uh, yeah, it's uh, this is standard lighting, kind of which uh, I can show you the second. This is his lamp, which we this is Philips lamp, which we buy mm -hmm. bought from the standard market, which are available anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We okay, we you. don't. E yeah, we don't, I, yeah, you can see this, I made picture, yeah, on the right, you can see this is lamp, and uh, this is our devices, and uh, for, to the test it. This is distance around maybe uh, 30 centimeters, I believe, I don't remember exactly. Also, and here it's a Newport and a solar cell simulator we can use before. Yeah, but yeah, but there have been many problems also for the shift these devices from the market because the indications these devices is working great, 
but we need replacement interlayered. And we use it in the inverted structure now, it's in oxide. But when defecation, sometimes devices working great, sometimes not to the uh, under indoor lighting. And we found this is uh, in the zinc oxide needs uh, highest power lighting for the start working devices. But we found few papers that there is, uh, we published about it, these problems. This is means and uh, we, we can use it with uh, interlay between zinc oxide and bulk reductions needs to use it for the getting highest power for the indoor application also. In our way, it's, uh, you need to put your devices on the solar simulator and the wait in few minutes and after that you can test the devices on the indoor. But it's not a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah this is, is more, more challenging to replacement zinc oxide for the indoor applications now in the few groups and working on it. That also in the my devices I'm, I'm used not exactly zinc oxide, I'm used zinc oxide and PAE interlayer to the safe performance on the indoor lighting. I didn't talk about it, but it's very important for the getting highest power for the indoor uh, photovoltaic devices. Yeah, and um, yeah, maybe uh, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I, uh -huh. yeah, this is a uh, picture you can see and uh, I'm using a different additive. This is about previous questions about crystallizations. Also, you can see in the IFM images and this is in the uh, optical um, uh, microscope and uh, um, polarizations microscopy and uh, you can see in the higher crystallizations, PDI is higher concentrations around 10% DPA. You can see higher crystallizations and uh, PDI materials and the dry decrease performance dramatically. This is means control and additive and uh, to get in small domains is very important for the uh, non fully uh, acceptor materials. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, could you comment, please, uh, on the theoretical limit for uh, for your OPVs in case of uh, comparison with the silicon solar cell? So, just oh yeah, 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 and uh, yeah for the yeah Some for the uh -huh. yeah, yeah for the theoretical and the calculations for the not exactly for the silica, but and. It was estimated, and for the, for example, for the uh, outdoor applications, at maximum 35%. You can get in, but for the indoor, it's around uh, uh, 50 and 60%. Depends on the source of the light in the indoor, and the maximum it will be 60%. Theoretical it's limited for the indoor photovoltaic devices. This is the. It will be depends on the materials which you use it and source which you use it for the indoor lighting. So around sixteen. Yeah, right around sixteen. Yeah, Six, sixty. Sixty. Not, 60? not sixty. Sixty. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, wow! It's, it's around yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, theoretical limited and uh, sixty percent. But most important, you need to understand this is uh, you you can have it than sixty percent. But you can not not get in highest power than uh, in the indoor than in the outdoor because and the power outdoor is very huge and in instead of indoor we don't need it in the indoor in the huge power in the indoor lighting in the indoor source indoor source it's maximum power is one uh, milliwatts per centimeter square but outdoor in ten uh, one hundred milliwatts centimeter square in standard I am 0.5 but in the mm -hmm. performance of course performance is the highest dramatically is highest theoretical is limited for the uh, uh, fluorescence lamp around and 50 percent but for the LED around 60 percent mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. it's a yeah. It's also and the last publications which I saw, it's publications in the Nature in the last year. In the maximum performance for the indoor will achieve for the OPV, it's around twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we have two questions uh, from the chat. Can you see it or you cannot see the chat? Uh, no, no, I cannot see the chat. I have uh, pleasure if you read uh -huh. it. Yeah, Alexander, can you, can you, uh, okay, maybe I will start somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, so Alexandra wrote that uh, she missed uh, energy diagram of the device. Uh, and did you check the forward IV, uh, IV curve? Uh, so she guessed that you measured backward IV curve. So do you have the measurements for backward, uh, forward and backward? Do, do you see any hysteresis? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I measured and the forward is background. Backward is uh, this exactly the same, right? Not changed. Ah, okay, for okay. The, yeah. yeah, but and yeah it's um these devices we measure in both ways it's not mm -hmm. Good. It's not affected yeah okay and what is the charge lifetime for the absor uh, absorber layer uh, you mean and the ah you charge mean lifetime, the, uh, re recombination lifetime oh recommendation uh, we don't measure in recommendation of lifetime yeah. Okay, okay. But unfortunately, yeah, we don't have technique for the measurements, it, but we measure just mobility. It's, but it's uh, the problem with uh, uh, our, our materials, it's still in the still low fill factor, and uh, we may when we measure mobility, it's still low electron mobility, and uh, we need to improve it. and uh, our labs and focuses on the improved electron mobility for the acceptor, acceptor PDI materials. And uh, mm -hmm. this is m most and uh, important mm -hmm. for us now. But uh, and, uh, if you have any idea how, which materials, we, how we change these materials to improve electron mobility. But uh, we found in the few publications that I use it instead, NH, in, this is an HDMI. Did I use it uh, 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 in, instead of an H and the uh, CLAN on the S? Uh, but and the, the mobility is increased, but problem uh, becomes with solubility. And the, our goals in the making green solvent materials and the highest and highest and the green solvent materials and the, also. Um, but problems is still in the in the electron mobility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And as for uh, comparison with perovskites for indoor applications, yeah. so uh, per spectro absorption spectrum of perovskites is very uh, very well matched to the this uh, indoor lighting, as far as I understand. If you look at these uh, red reddish curves, and mobility is much better. So mm -hmm. I, I think yes, that efficiency should be much higher for indoor application. Do you, do you have the record numbers from literature? Do do you know them? I wonder. I yeah, for the indoor and uh, I saw in the pair of sky devices and have twenty five percent, but uh, this is is uh, not twenty uh, five. Yeah, it's twenty five percent. Ah, for yeah. outdoors, for outdoor. For for the yeah for the outdoor applications yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. yeah for, for the indoors? outdoor and for indoor same i saw same 25 percent ah, okay. why 25 28 percent i think so yeah between mm. 25 28 but uh, uh also yeah the spectrum is very is very good mentioned this matching with uh 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 in indoor lighting, but and the still uh, needs uh, more problems to solve and for the uh, perovskite materials. First, first of all, this is a problem to making devices in the air. Our devices we can measure and we can make in, in the air, 
and all devices which I am presented today we are making in the air. Also, mm -hmm. and now problems. Uh, this is uh, 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 greens. Uh, you for the fast uh, transferred materials from the uh, lab scale to the manufacturing applications and making in the uh, you give these materials for the industrial and you need to use it in the green solvent materials and non galagen solvent materials. Uh, also green processes and production devices. This is means if you use perovskite, perovskite now is, now is not green solvent. So it's not, it's not galagen solvent materials. It's also, it's very challenging to use it for in the, and use it on the manufacturing. It needs, uh, First, you need and solve on this problem for the perovskite. For the photovoltaic devices, and of course we have not not getting champion materials, but it's still in 10%. Also, it's still high voltage, and uh, it also it's still getting uh, good performance for the. Also, it's very good for the challenging immediately for the manufacturing productions. We can. Uh, I am already optimizations and we can immediately to give for the manufacturing production few hundred meters or mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thanks. So I also see that Victoria raised her hand. So please, Victoria. Hello, thank you. Hi. My question is, uh, when you talk about upscaling, do you have any, I don't know, quantitative parameters for that upscaling? I don't know, target? efficiency or limits on cost of materials or some correlation for example i don't know such efficiency or power for such a size and for such a cost of materials uh, you mean and the applications for the for example internet things or which one and the, for the for example for the inter, internet things you need and the uh, few voltage and uh, for the internet things, it's enough and a uh, few mi microwatts per centimeter square to already use it for the solar solar cells for the working devices and uh, instead of couples months and working and during couples year, for example. You mean this one or which you? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Not depending on application. At okay. Any slide you wrote what the target of the rock is upscaling of organic photovoltaic. But mm -hmm. what do you mean under that upscaling? What do you want to do as a final result of upscaling? Oh, final result. Final result, it will be uh, roll to roll printed, these materials uh, for okay. the for the internet things uh, charge it and you don't have for example limits of you know, the price cost of material uh, no more than i don't know 500 uh, uh, euros for uh, yeah we, uh, no 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 we, we're not it's estimated how much it will be cost we we, okay. uh, we estimated how much cost our materials but and now it's uh, we calculate Calculations: uh, How much, uh, much each compound to cost for the uh, devices, and mm -hmm. uh, now it's it's most costly is uh, samples with uh, ITO. IT, we found this ITO. If you we not productions, if your company not producted ITO with uh, for the for example, is if you are not making and uh, flexible. Uh, much, uh, substrate with ITO, it will be costly mm -hmm. for the productions because uh, most costly for us, for us na now, most costly materials it's uh, samples with ITO. S samples with ITO much higher cost than our our materials if you we print it or also if you are full our devices. For example, full full our devices with calculations around it will be ten dollars, but my samples which we use it's around 100 to uh, dollars but for example if you we will buy and um, it's your one 
uh, one meter square, it will be one thousand dollars. But our mat our device uh, the cost on this on the these samples it will be one uh, ten ten dollars. If you we productions, yeah, this is means and the, our ne next challenge is it's uh, replacement ITO also or making our own uh, samples. It's uh, most challenged for the company. Okay. For the okay. yeah, for decrease costly. For us Thank now you. costly, yeah, some <laughs> substrate. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, we have uh, one question from the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, for the, it addresses uh, the fourth slide. Slide oh, number four. Okay. okay, just a second. Uh -huh. Four. Okay. Uh, here. So mm -hmm. the question is: uh, in this case, the light propagates spheric. Is this like not plane wave? It's like a diverges. A light is uh, propagated di divergently. And um, the question is: what are the dependence on the area of measurements? So, in this case. Uh, maybe in homogeneous illumination means so. Or did you take into uh, account the, any inhomogeneities of illumination? Um, well, for instance, if you print larger devices, in this case, do you, do you have? I, I expect uh, do you expect any inhomogeneity? How how inhomogeneity will affect your your performance of the device? Uh, okay, we. Yeah, I'm. For example, I'm printed uh, one time and um, one time and uh, how much? Ten devices for the on the ITO. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, also maybe I can show you histograms data. Just a second. And uh, yeah, this is histogram data for the slot decoder and um, spin coating. Of course, and the slot decoder, and the, this is one exactly one time I'm printed, and the, this is I'm using the same same solvent, and this one time to I'm printing and around twenty devices, and the performance between two and four point five percent for the spin spin cast performance between five and uh, six point five percent. This is uh, not exactly for the each materials uh, when I'm. Printing and spin cast exactly uh, same histogram. I found if you use it and uh, fully ran, as a slot die showed me much higher performance than instead of on the uh, spin cast. But this is, I think, so problem with uh, film formations if difference from the spin cast and slot die and manufacturing productions in the future. Of course, we need optimizations and the slot die and. Uh, for the manufacturing productions for the getting highest performance. Also, uh, where is this for the slide? Yeah, yeah. Also, I think so if you we increase area, it will be, uh, of course, and the decrease, uh, little bit decrease performance because and the, uh, if you making devices and the biggest, biggest, biggest devices area, of course, and the, this is, have problems with charge separations. Also, you have problems with how you connections few devices between together. Of course, you need to study how you and um, you need optimization shape. Also, you need optimizations connection between devices, and uh, it will be future step for the manufacturing productions higher biggest devices. But for the indoor, I think so. It's uh, not. Ex you don't need exactly biggest devices. You need to around 10 by 10 centimeters. It will be enough, but it's still biggest, but you need just optimizations and how connections devices between on the, on the, this 10 by 10 centimeters square plot uh, substrate. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, of course. And then, uh, uh, organic photovoltaic, when there are formations, if you found the, uh, good parameters of there will be not dramatically affect on the. I I, I saw 
I saw more papers about perovskite. Perovskite, it's uh, dramatically changed and uh, um, dramatically um, sensitive to the different parameters on the preparations uh, devices. But in the OPV, if you found, in the, for example, con constraints between donor and an acceptor, also you found this solvent. And uh, our goals in the development of materials, which uh, you use it only one solvent for the for the manufacturing productions, don't use it additive because additive it will be effect on the crystallizations or photovoltaics. Our goals will be future and the synthesize new materials which be which not affected on the uh, when you use it additive and will be just uh, use one solvent for the productions and uh, and it will be improved gamma genius uh, gamma genius and the uh, uh, devices i think so mm -hmm. okay thank you so much mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if uh, there are not any other questions, so let's thank our speaker so for a very uh, nice talk, very informative and uh, very useful for our like photovoltaic part of our department. So thanks a lot. Hopefully we, we will collaborate in the future uh, on this topic. And for the audience, let me... Uh, uh, as, uh, announce the, our next uh, seminar so it will be not on in pri on friday uh, because our joint optical seminar optical and theoretical seminar will be uh, on um, uh, wednesday next wednesday uh, 17th of june mm, and uh, the talk will be given by professor stefan meyer quite famous professor in uh, plasmonics um, maybe some of you knows about his book uh, plasmonics and yeah and he will talk also about um, this uh, energies some energy stuff so the talk will be about nanoantennas for light harvesting and energy conversion so how nanophotonics helped to improve the devices so yeah see you at our next seminar and uh, thanks again for your kind attention and questions so see you bye yeah thank you invite me yeah thanks thanks sergey <laughs>